And our final inductee on this afternoon was a three-time Southwest Conference player, uh, all Southwest Conference player, I should say, at Texas Tech. And he led the Red Raiders to two conference titles, two Southwest Conference tournament titles, and two NCAA playoff appearances in the years of 95 and 96. This is a former Mr. Basketball from the state of Texas. Please welcome from Texas Tech University, Jason Sasser. Well, Jason, I started with, or I mentioned in the intro, uh, Mr. Basketball. I mean, um, that had to be such an amazing feeling and accomplishment for a young man to have achieved from Kimball High School out of Dallas. Yes, it was. Let me just take time out real quick. Red Raiders, where you at? All right. Thank my family for coming, my friends, uh, everybody that support me. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a great accomplishment. Um, I'm from this area, Dallas. Fort Worth, Kimball High School. I always say home on the state championships. Uh, so we always had that, had that tradition uh, at Kimball. And to be honored to be one of the, you know, the best out of Texas, it was a great honor. And obviously when you are Mr. Basketball in a big state like Texas, at that, by which time Texas had become a basketball state, not just a football state. Yes. Um, you could have gone just about anywhere. And you went to Texas Tech. Tell us why. Okay, that wasn't, that wasn't the original plan. Um, what happened was I was on my way to North Carolina State. Um, ACC at that time was the number one basketball conference, and I wanted to, to play with the best and compete with the best because um, in my mind I knew I wanted to play professional basketball en route to the NBA. So I knew if I was able to go and compete there, it would improve my chances greatly. Uh, but something happened. Uh, I actually already committed to North Carolina State. We're going back and forth with the coach. Um, my dad was kind of involved. We're, we're just talking about it. And I wanted to play right away as a freshman. Uh, that was my big thing. And really didn't get a vibe. So I decommitted. And I had a couple of more schools. And um, Coach Dickey, Doc, Doc Sattler at that time was the assistant coach. He, it was just something about him. Um, and when I went to Lubbock, it was just a great college atmosphere. And I decided just to say, you know what, instead of being a, um, I thought I would have been a big fish in a big pond in North Carolina State. I said, let me be a big fish in a small pond and try to bring Texas basketball up because a lot of our players at that time were leaving to go play for other, other schools outside of Texas. So it worked out really well. I'm glad I made that decision. I'm sure you are. And I know Coach Dickey is. And what was it like once you got to know him better and playing for Coach Dickey? Uh, Coach, he always thought he was a tough cowboy. Uh, little bitty guy. Uh, he never did. One thing I, I didn't like about Coach Dickey, um, he was he thought he was a cowboy. I always had a big truck with big belt buckles. Um, I always had a rope with him. And I say, Coach, you know what? I'm from the city. I never rode a horse before. And I know you have horses out there. And you, you can, you know, probably teach me how to ride a horse. And he never let me ride. Come on. Yeah, I don't know if he thought I was going to fall off or get hurt, but he never let me ride a horse. So I still haven't rode a horse to this day, but uh, it was great. It was great. Yeah, that was a good time. I know in 95 and 96, you guys had great teams, went to the tournament. Um, what was it like just being together with that collection of talent, of which you were, you know, you were the, the leader and, and the best player? Well, I, I just, I love basketball. I love winning. Um, and I knew I would bring that Kimball tradition down to Tech. I mean, I remember with, always playing, um, you know, before the season, hey, everybody needs to play. We need to learn how to uh, play with each other. We need to get a good feel of knowing who can do what. And guys will be like, well, Jason, man, let's, the dining hall closes at uh, 7 and 8. I'm like, I don't care about eating right now. Let's play. I had already told the, uh, Tony, he was the head of our dining hall, he's already having sandwiches prepared for us. We're not going to really eat the good meals. Just take your sandwiches. And it was, and that's what I brought to Tech. And the guys end up jumping on board, and we end up having a lot of good success. I uh, had very talented players. Um, probably five or six of our players actually went on to play uh, in the NBA, so it was a very talented team. 
Yeah, including you who got to fulfill your dream, drafted uh, into the NBA. But in 96, you guys went to the Sweet 16. Yes. I think even as good as you were, it surprised outsiders. Were you yes. guys surprised to make it that far? No, we, we were not surprised at all. Uh, the year before, we knew we had a really good team. We ended up getting snubbed. Uh, out of the NCAA, has to go to the NIT. But we knew that we had really good guys on the team. Uh, Darvin Ham, Mark Davis, uh, Corey Carr, Tony Batty, Carr Smith, Jason Martin, uh, myself, um, and Janae Cooper, a lot more guys that were really, really good. And I tell people that, like, our team was good enough to win a national championship. And I tell them that, and they're like, yeah, whatever. So just because we didn't win it, it's hard to say it, but our team actually was good enough to win a national champ championship. Uh, I was in a hotel with a coach, uh, I think Calipari. Uh, he was the coach of UMass at the time, and this is when I had turned pro, and we were up in the hotel talking, and he said, hey, Jason, I really didn't want to play you guys. You guys were stacked. Uh, he had Marcus Canby at the time, and I was like, coach, we really wanted that game. We would have played them in order to go to the Final Four. I think they end up, uh, I don't know if they end up winning. I think they end up beating Georgetown at the time, but our team was really that talented. Uh, we had all the pieces. We had a strong starting crew. We had a strong uh, crew coming off the bench, uh, but we, we did end up having a lot of success. I think we only lost two games that year, so it was a really good. Yeah, what a great uh, uh, final year, really, of the uh, of the Southwest Conference for that championship. What about your pro career then? Um, you know, obviously, to have made it there is such a significant accomplishment. It is. It is. Uh, it was. Um, even when I got there, it was all about competition. I ended up playing 13 years professionally, um, played with the Spurs uh, for a while, um, the Grizzlies when they were actually in Vancouver, and the Mavericks here uh, for a while. But majority of my time was spent um, overseas in Europe, uh, Spain, Germany, um, Asia. So I got a chance to experience the world, took my wife and my kids over. So um, to, to, to play basketball, to play something you love uh, professionally that long, to make a okay amount of money, um, it, it, it was good. It was good. Well, it's uh, you were you know a, a reminder of the Southwest Conference everywhere you went after yes. that, and we do appreciate that very much, Jason. Congratulations and thank you very much, Jason Sasser, oh. Southwest Conference Hall of Famer. All right, thank you. There you go.